here with Jean from Bookish Thoughts today, and today we're gonna do the book heart tag. Now, if you haven't heard of this before, that makes sense, because we're making it up today. I asked you guys on Twitter on Valentine's Day to send me a ton of love-themed book questions, and I've compiled my 10 favorite ones. We're basically creating a tag. Both of us don't read a lot of romancy yes, stuff, we discovered. romance books. So I read a lot of stuff where, like, people happen to fall in love with each other at some point, but it's never really at the core of books that yeah. I read, if you don't count Jane Austen. <laughs> Number one, who's your favorite literary couple? My favorite literary couple is a little bit unconventional and it's also a tiny bit spoilery, but mm, we're talking classics here, so I think we're okay. Yeah. It is Kathy and Hareton from Withering Heights, and no, you haven't read that yet. Okay, but then. basically, this book is so depressing and the love story is so doomed, and then it ends with hope. And the two characters, at first, you don't think they're going to be good for each other at all. They just sort of really dislike each other. But as they sort of spend more time with each other, they do a lot of learning from each other. So they, they both become better people. Sounds like a healthy relationship. I know. Oh, it's good. And I think there's some foreshadowing in the beginning of the book as well. We can kind of okay. see where it's going. Mine's is uh, Daphne and Chloe. And that's what the book's called as well. It's called Daphne and Chloe. And the characters are called Daphne and Chloe. And actually, when I think about it, that's probably like one of the only books I've read that's specifically a romance. It's an ancient Greek novel from like the second century BC by Longus. And it's just this like 18, 90 page little story about this teenager couple and they are like one's a goat herd and one's a shepherdess and they just they, they hang around with their sheep and their goats in like the fields and like fall in love but they don't really understand what their feelings are and they don't understand how to get rid of them so they like basically it's them trying to figure out how to like consummate their love the whole like 80 pages and it's just really adorable. I think I started shopping for that one. That yes <laughs> that is actually my go-to like gift for people as well because it's such I think it's just the kind of story anybody can enjoy it's so cute. Number two Top three fictional boyfriends. I've gone for the older man for some reason. My all time number one favourite fictional boyfriend or man friend is uh, Dr. Watson from the Sherlock Holmes series. I love him and I, I have Dr. Watson all the way. I like a man with a moustache. My like fictional crush as a teenager was Murtag from the Aragon books, The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Bellini. And yeah, he kind of goes through a phase of being a baddie, but in the first book, he was, he was a goodie, and that's when I fell in love with him, so I feel like it's justifiable. And the last one is uh, Mr. Bingley from Pride and Prejudice, because, you know, I mean, if I was confronted with Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley, I would most certainly go for go Mr. For Bingley. Bingley. Yeah, definitely. He's cute. I feel like mine are all slightly similar in a way, but maybe not really. So, number one is post Hogwarts Ron. Okay, yeah. Hogwarts Ron yeah. is a bit of a pain in the ass, yeah. but I've read so many great fanfics about, like, 23 year old Ron. Not too bad. Then there is Ian O'Hare from The Host. You don't get quite enough makeout scenes in this book. I think that lands him a spot on my top three list because you never quite get what you want. Okay. Uh, and then the final one is one I think a lot of people can agree on and it is four from Divergent. This was one of the first times th that I read a book and I was like, this character is hot. You just made me think, can I have a bonus? I want Peter from uh from The Hunger Games, and I know I'm going to have to fight a lot of women for him. Oh, and then I have a bonus one, which you've read this book as well. Um, Montgomery oh, yeah. from The Madman's Daughter. I don't know how this happened. Yeah. I don't know, man. He's just... <laughs> Number three, romantic tropes you wish people would stop using. Biggest pet peeve is the, oh, but you're not like the other girls, or the, I'm not like the other girls. I've sort of recently discovered how often this happens and now every time I see it I just, just like, focus in on it. Saying you like someone by insulting other people. Yes. Sort of. And then the other one I had was letting go of a breath you didn't know you were holding. I definitely agree with the whole insulting women by saying they're not like other women. Which literary couple do you think are actually terrible for each other? I have a really obvious one there. Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> didn't part. end yeah. very well. Spoiler alert. And then also this is a kind of spoiler for The Hunger Games. So if you haven't read the final book yet, you've read it right now, right? Do you not think? So, okay, so skip ahead like 30 <laughs> seconds. Peter and Katniss. Oh no! Oh, I just, I felt so betrayed <laughs> because I just, personality-wise, I just, like, I'm not, okay. I was not happy with that. I agree with the, Shakespeare seems to have doomed loves. Macbeth and Lady Macbeth should not have been a duo 
ever. Number five, best romance book to movie adaptation. I really like the BBC um, miniseries adaptation of um, Jane Eyre. And actually, I was thinking about it, and I have a prop. Also, actually, Pride and Prejudice BBC adaptation. That was really good as well. It was really good because it was really, oh, you like this one. Oh. <laughs> I like the BBC one in a way because it's so, like, nothing really that like in our modern terms of romantic or sexual happens like the biggest deal is that they like hold hands and I thought that was quite nice. Yeah so I've also uh, brought Wuthering Heights 2003 with Tom Hardy and then I also have the Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson, Ellen Rickman and Kate Winslet. This is so I and mean, Hugh Grant as well. There's a flower over his name. <laughs> Number six, which is the best book to read to your boyfriend or girlfriend in the style of Fangirl? Do they read each other books? So basically in Fangirl, Levi I think has some, like he can't really focus that well, mm -hmm. so he doesn't enjoy reading and so Kath writes fan fiction and so she starts reading him the fan fiction so and it's literally like the most Adorable thing. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking you don't want anything that's really sad. No. Or I don't think you want anything that's too pacey. I was thinking maybe an epic fantasy. Yes. Sort of really something you can drag it. Keep on coming back. It also kind of has to be something that you don't then want to go off and read on your own. Like it needs to be okay for you to sort of have yeah. time in between and come back to it. More romantic and literary version of saving a TV show for your couple. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. yeah. Number seven. Which book would you say? is your favourite if you're on a first date. I'd be honest, but only because I'm the worst liar in the world. I'd probably pick something like Terry Pratchett's Going Postal, because it's kind of like, it's funny, it's it's fantasy, like it's a lot of genres and it kind of sums up a reading yeah. taste and it's also, like Terry Pratchett's so popular, I feel like you might end up with something to talk about. I would say Wuthering Heights, which is my favourite book, because I think it kind of is like, warning, I like historical stuff and costume dramas and yeah. really <laughs> sad things. Number eight, best book to read after a breakup. My suggestion is Sense and Sensibility because it deals with two really different sisters that handle being in love very differently and there's also a lot of heartbreak in this but it ends well and so I feel like it makes you sort of go through all the emotions and kind of come to peace with it as you sort of read along and you're like yes people get broken up with and you have to let people down sometimes but in the end it's all fine it's also like the the bond between the sisters is really nice um, other relationships are important well maybe if you're like a little bit further on in your breakup and you're ready to like get back out there there's really good Ovid's Ars Amatoria is a how to on finding yourself a man or a woman um so you know and it's really funny and it's always good to have a laugh after a breakup number nine what is your favorite same sex or queer couple I have a recent one from from the Ruin World Chronicles by Robin Hobb and that is Carson and Cedric and um, what I think not only is this just a really nice relationship between two men who are on equal footing and just do kind of complete each other in a way that they're still independent but they offer up different things to the relationship and are clearly happy together but also Cedric starts off the series in a really abusive manipulative relationship so it's really nice to see him kind of like recover from that and find love it's kind of weird because it's not like the characters from the book but it's the characters within the story um, and that is Simon Snow and Baz which this is sort of like the fanfic within this book it's supposed to be like a Harry Draco ah, didn't know that yet. No. <laughs> um, and though I, I, I'm not really into Harry Draco slash yeah. fics, I did it really like the fanfics in this also, this question made me realise that I have not read enough books that have same-sex couples. If you have any suggestions, this is definitely one that would be good if we have some extra suggestions for, so leave them in the comments. And then finally, which book would you give to someone as a symbol of your affection? I think I would either find a special edition of a book that I know they love, yeah, like find a really old a nice edition, idea. or just like a really like a fancy one, or I think giving a really beautiful graphic novel is good because it's not a huge commitment and yeah. not everyone is as much into reading yeah. as we are and so I feel like if you give someone a really big book and they sort of feel obligated to read it and it just doesn't yeah. work that well sometimes so I think giving someone a nice graphic novel that is just a beautiful gift and that's not a huge commitment to read yeah. I think is always a good idea. Yeah, I think that is a good idea. Okay, that was the last question. So if you guys enjoyed this, feel free to do the book, I don't, what did I call it, the book heart tag? Feel free to do the book heart tag as well. And then if you do one, leave us a comment with the link in the comments. Go check out Jean's channel. I'll put a link to that in the description. Doi! Doi.